hey guys welcome back to my channel it's a girl modest and i will be doing a seven day series of passion week or holy week whatever you call it it's the week leading up to jesus christ crucifixion and i hope you guys enjoy it today will be day one so stay tuned for the other days god bless you all i hope you guys enjoy Welcome to this Abide Passion Week meditation. We are taking a journey through the last events of Jesus' life on earth, through the eyes of those who followed him. Join us today in the city of Jerusalem, where God's people are preparing to celebrate the Passover. The city is crowded, busier than usual with families traveling in to eat the Passover meal together. Every spare bedroom is filled, and people are even camping on the hillsides just to be here, to celebrate the Passover in Jerusalem. The markets bustle with people buying herbs, and the temple is crammed with families on pilgrimage to worship God together. Yes, the city is crowded and busy, but you can't help but notice that there's something else in the air this year, too. People are expectant. And some people, especially the religious leaders, seem anxious. Of course, people are usually expectant at this holiday, remembering God's deliverance. But this year, there's just a current of energy under it. It feels more intense. Passover has been a central part of your life for as long as you can remember. Your faith in God is inextricable from the taste of bitter herbs and the crackle of the unfamiliar, unleavened bread. The smoky flavor of roasted lamb and the words... A story that by this point you can say by heart. Your people, your ancestors lived as slaves in Egypt. And when God commanded Pharaoh to let them go, Pharaoh would not obey. So God sent the plagues. Blood frogs, lice, wild beasts, cattle disease, boils, hail, locusts, darkness, and the slang of the firstborn. On that last night, God told your people to slaughter a lamb. And to put the lamb's blood on your doorposts. When the angel of death saw it, he would pass over your house, letting everyone live. Saved by the blood of the lamb. And then, finally, Pharaoh let the people go, and they streamed out of Egypt, protected and guided by God all the way to the promised land. You wonder what it must have been like to have felt that close to God, led by God through the parted waters of the Red Sea, then led by God who appeared as a pillar of fire in the night, and a pillar of cloud by day. You know people who believe that God will rescue your people again. And you wonder what that rescue would look like. You live now under Roman rule, which is sometimes harsh and sometimes fair. And you worship at the temple 
and you study the scriptures and you wait wondering about the Messiah that the prophets speak of some of your friends thought John the Baptist had been it had been the promised Messiah but John pointed you to another to his cousin Jesus and you've heard the stories about him about the healings, the miracles, and the wild things he said. He's made people pretty angry. His popularity has left the religious leaders feeling threatened. And you, you've stayed on the edges of things, watching and waiting, just to see what he will do next. Until today. Today, two men came into your house and said, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room? Where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. You paused. You knew these men, Peter and John, disciples of Jesus, and you knew what they were asking. Would you welcome Jesus into your home? Or would you continue to keep your distance? You studied their faces. The open and expectant looks they carried. And you found yourself wanting to know more. So you decided to give them the room. You took them upstairs and showed them everything they'd need. They thanked you and got to work preparing the food for their meal. Over the next few hours, the rest of the disciples show up. You meet them at the door, take them upstairs, make sure they are provided for. And you watch. Jesus arrives, and the friends lounge at the table together, comfortable and happy. You had heard that Jesus spoke in cryptic parables. And as you listen in, you have to agree. You find yourself struggling to understand his words. Out of the friendly conversation around the meal, you hear Jesus' voice. I have been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. What suffering, you wonder? And how will this meal's meaning be fulfilled in the kingdom? Then you watch as Jesus takes a cup of wine and lifts it up, thanking God for it. But he doesn't drink. He says, take this and share it amongst yourselves. For I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. His friends pass the cup around. Some of them look as confused as you feel. Then Jesus takes some bread and gives thanks to God for it. He breaks it in pieces and gives it to the disciples saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. They eat the bread. They eat the rest of their meal. And from your spot in the corner, looking on, you wish someone would ask Jesus what he meant. But then he takes another cup of wine and he says, this cup is the new covenant between 
is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. But here at this table, sitting amongst us as friends, is the man who will betray me. For it has been determined that the Son of Man must die. But what sorrow awaits the one who betrays him? Everyone begins to speak at once. You watch their faces, wondering which of them had betrayed Jesus. And how Jesus knew about it. They begin to argue with each other quick to cast blame, each quick to assert that he would never. Then they begin to argue amongst themselves about who would be the greatest among them. Jesus stops them and says, In this world, the kings and great men lord it over their people. Yet they are called friends of the people. But among you it will be different. Those who are the greatest among you should take the lowest rank, and the leader should be like a servant. Who is more important? The one who sits at the table, or the one who serves? The one who sits at the table, of course, but not here. For I am among you as one who serves. You have stayed with me in my time of trial, and just as my Father has granted me a kingdom, I now grant you the right to eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Then Jesus turns his attention on Peter and says, Simon, Simon, Simon. Simon. Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat. But I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. Then you hear Peter say forcefully, Lord, I am ready to go to prison with you and even to die with you. But then Jesus says to him, Peter, let me tell you something. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. You hear gasps from those gathered. You see Peter's look of shock. You can't imagine such a thing. But the conversation around the table begins to die down. And a few minutes later, Jesus and his disciples thank you for the room and leave your house. You hear them speak of a walk to the Garden of Gethsemane. Your mind whirls with all that you've seen and heard. The people who said Jesus was hard to understand were right. Nothing seems clear to you. Who is going to betray him? Why is Peter going to deny Jesus? What suffering is Jesus about to endure? And who can believe in a kingdom where the servants are the greatest? The scent of smoke and roasted lamb fills the air, mingling with wine and baking bread. As Jesus and his disciples walk toward the Mount of Olives, families in their homes across the city celebrate. Remembering the deliverance and freedom that God brought long ago with the blood of the lamb. And looking forward to a Messiah who will deliver them.
Let's pray. God, thank you for sending your son to be the Paschal Lamb, the perfect sacrifice for the whole world. Thank you for bringing us through his death and resurrection into a kingdom that cannot be shaken. An upside down kingdom where the poor, the sick, and the sad are called blessed and greatest in the kingdom. Oh, Lord, help us to embrace the gift of salvation that you've given us through Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Until next time, may you abide in Christ.